What is up guys? It is Saturday afternoon. It's beautiful outside. So naturally I'm inside because I'm a software engineer and the sun hurts us. Today we are going to be talking about a subject that is very near and dear to my heart and that is two programming languages, two of my favorite languages, and those are Scala and Python. And we're going to be talking about which of those two you should learn if you're looking to get into one of them. So before we talk about which one you should learn, I think we need to talk about some of the pros and cons of each language because that's going to help guide your decision on which you should learn a lot. So let's start with Python. What makes Python great? What are some of the pros and cons of it? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is Python is obviously a dynamically typed language. It is not compiled. It's run through an interpreter when you actually run your code. Um, and that's nice for a lot of reasons. From the actual practical programming standpoint, it's nice because it's very easy to get feedback on your code. You can write some Python and run it basically immediately in the Python shell and see what your code's doing if it's working correctly. Python also has a very low learning curve compared to other languages. You know, if you're talking about comparing it to a language like C or C++ or even Scala, um, it's going to be a lot quicker to get started with Python. One of the things worth noting for Python is that it is not really a functional language. Functional. I use that word a lot. Um, no, it's not really a functional language. So um, it's going to seem a lot more, if you guys have experience with this, object-oriented. In fact, that's a good way to describe Python. It's an object-oriented programming language. Yeah, one of the other awesome things that you get with Python is because it is so popular and has gotten so popular over the last, I don't know, decade or so, there's a ton of support out there for it. You know, any problem you run into when you're coding in Python, chances are somebody else has run into that problem as well. And you're going to be able to find how to solve that problem pretty easily by you know looking at Stack Overflow or just Googling or something like that. Okay, now let's talk about Scala for a second. So Scala is kind of, I don't want to say the polar opposite of Python, but it's definitely a lot different. One really cool fact about Scala is that it is a compiled for the JVM. So it runs on the Java Virtual Machine along with Java. Scala actually compiles down to Java bytecode and, you know, one of the reasons that that's really cool is it means you can mix Scala and Java together pretty well. They're really interoperable. So you can be writing Scala and decide, hey, you know what? I want to write some Java and start writing some Java. And you can mix those yeah, two languages together and they, they tend to work together really well. One of, the, one of my favorite things about Scala is that a lot of big open source projects that are out there are, are written in Scala, and particularly ones that I'm really excited about and I think are really cool. Um, a couple, just off the top of my head, a couple that I can think of are Spark and Akka, both of those. If you guys haven't checked those out, check those out. Apache Spark is amazing. It's super cool. Um, and Akka as well, just as amazing as, as, as Spark. It's a huge just set of tools and, and frameworks for doing all sorts of common things in sort of the distributed computing world. Scala as a language can usually be, you know, it depends on, there's a lot of debate around this, but I would characterize it as an object functional language. And I think you'll, you know, if you go read the docs, you'll find that kind of description too. And what that means is it sort of combines ideas of more typical object oriented programming, like you're thinking in, you know, maybe the Java world with functional aspects of programming. So it has a lot of support for programming in a functional style. So some of the more kind of I don't necessarily want to say negative, but tough things to get around with Scala is that it has a very steep learning curve. Scala is not a language that you're going to start writing today and, you know, within a week you understand what's going on and, and you're good at it. It takes time to get good at Scala and you kind of have to accept that fact if you're going to double down and say, hey, I'm going to learn this. You kind of have to realize that it's going to take you a while until you get decent at it. Yeah, so one of the kind of downsides of Scala is that it is a fairly niche language still. It has been gaining a lot of popularity. As I mentioned, there's tons of open source projects that, are, that have been written in it. Yeah, Scala is just not as big as something like Java or Python is. So it just doesn't have quite as much community support as those two languages. And what I've found is if you're writing a lot of Scala, you better be prepared to read some Scala source code, to read the source code of whatever library or framework you're using, because chances are you're going to run into problems that somebody hasn't really run into before, or there's just not a whole lot of information out there on the internet. Um, and you're gonna have to, you know, get used to that. So that's kind of a rundown of, you know, the differences between the two languages, sort of how I would characterize them. I guess sort of to recap, the main points are, Python is obviously a dynamic language, Scala is compiled, so big difference there in terms of how quick you're gonna be able to get feedback when you run your code. Um, 
big big difference there in terms of like the ecosystem and the tools you have to use for for development. Python I would say has a much or a much lower learning curve than Scala. It's much easier to be productive in Python and to learn it uh, quickly than Scala is. Yeah, I would say Scala gives you is, it has a very high learning curve compared to Python, but it is also incredibly expressive and if you're okay with that and comfortable with the fact that there might be 15 ways to do one thing, um, it's a really fun sort of language to figure out different ways to try things. It's fun to mix between functional styles of programming and, and object-oriented styles of programming, so it's really cool in that aspect. Yeah, and one of the other big comparisons that I can make with that are, is just Python is going to have a lot of kind of community support and a lot of help out there, a lot of good tooling for learning the language, whereas Scala is a little more niche than Python. It's still, you know, it just has a, a smaller user base, so you'll have a tougher time with Scala finding answers to things if if you don't know how to do something and you kind of have to grit your teeth and, and struggle through it with Scala a little bit more than Python is what I've found. So getting to the meat of what we were talking about and that is which of these two you should learn. Should you learn Python or should you learn Scala? And my honest opinion that is that if you're just getting started and you're trying to pick between one of the two, and especially if you don't have experience programming in another compiled language, I would definitely pick Python over the two. And the reason that is, is kind of I highlighted them during the video, which is that it's dynamic, it's easier to get um, up and running with Python. Honestly, with just a couple of weeks of practice, you can get to a point where you're writing some productive Python code. And I don't think that's true with Scala. I think it's, it has a high learning curve and it'll take a long time to really get to a point where you can um, write effective Scala code. Yeah, and I think that's not to say that it's not worthwhile to learn Scala. It absolutely is. You just have to accept the fact that the learning curve is gonna be a bit higher with it. It's gonna take you longer time to be able to write effective Scala code. Um, one of the cool things about Scala, and this is what I've found in my own career, is that it is more niche. And that can be a bad thing, but it can also be a really good thing. And when you're talking about jobs for software engineers, um, Scala, you'll find that salaries tend to be pretty high for good Scala engineers and experienced Scala engineers because there's just not a whole lot of people out there that are amazing at it. Um, in fact, I want to say if you look at like GitHub's developer survey for this past year, um, Scala is like one of the top two languages in terms of developer salary. So if you're looking for a language that's going to allow you to like really ratchet up your compensation, Scala is not a bad choice by any means. Yeah, so that's basically it, guys. Just wanted to give my thoughts on, you know, sort of Python versus Scala and, and which one you should learn. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, like, I, I really enjoy both of these programming languages. I think they're super fun. I've been enjoying Python myself more lately just because Scala can be really frustrating at times, even when you know you get something right and you do something right in Scala, it feels amazing. Um, Python's just a little easier to get started with, so I would recommend that over Scala if you're just getting started. Um, however, if you're the type that just wants to dive in and say, you know what, I'm gonna learn a hard language. Scala is a great choice because you'll have a lot of fun with it and there's definitely a lot of job opportunities out there for, for Scholar developers and, and high paying job opportunities. Cool guys, yeah, let me know if you liked this video, if you wanna see more like this, or even if you just have any comments on like the type of video you guys want to see, let me know in the comments. Make sure you hit subscribe and I will see you guys next time.